Welcome to the Fit 15 Podcast Show, where you'll find health and fitness inspiration, motivation, and information shared in 15-minute episodes. Tune in while getting a move on to make leading and enjoying the benefits of a healthy lifestyle almost too easy. It's the Fit 15. And now your host, Katherine Basu. Welcome to the Fit15 Podcast Show. I'm your host, Katherine Basu, and today I'm going to be talking about prenatal yoga with my guest, Gabby Orchid. Gabby found yoga her sophomore year of college thanks to an early morning yoga flow on TV. She saw the benefits of yoga firsthand, a lightness in the body, better digestion, and a reduction in anxiety. Eight years later, yoga re-entered her life after she gained 60 pounds while pregnant with her second child. She needed to find a workout she loved, one that toned the body but did not involve running. A college friend kept raving about booty yoga and her progress pictures were impressive. Gabby tried it, but at eight weeks postpartum, she was met with the disappointing reality of how out of shape her body was after giving her all in creating two beautiful baby souls. After practicing for two years, she went to the closest certification and has been sharing the practice within a three-county radius of her home. Falling even deeper in love with yoga and reveling in its benefits, she finished her 200-hour RYT through Bhutti Yoga in July. It is Gabby's life mission to lead women on the path to self-love and acceptance, to learn to love the body parts she once hated, to drop the lies from body dysmorphia and step into her power to rise up and live in her truth unapologetically every day. This is achieved through Bhutti Yoga Movement, Goddess Coaching Mindset, and Boudoir Portraits. A landlocked mermaid, Gabby lives in Pennsylvania with her two children, husband, and two kitties. She currently teaches at Soul Wellness and Gathering Space and Organic Mechanics. Gabby, I'm so excited to have you as my guest today. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I am super excited to talk with you today. So you teach prenatal yoga classes, and I have a lot of clients and listeners who tend to be moms or sometimes moms-to-be, so really excited to kind of dive into what prenatal yoga is and share some of its benefits with the listeners. So I don't know if you could start us off by helping us understand what the general difference is between a prenatal yoga class and a regular yoga class and why a mom-to-be might want to go and check out a prenatal class in her area versus just going to yoga in general? Okay. A prenatal class, the yoga instructor is specifically trained in what poses are safe for the pregnant body and how to modify Mm -hmm. for the pregnant body. You will have a more tailored experience with a prenatal yoga class. Um, there will be no back bends, no inversions, no twisting of the stomach. Mm -hmm. So like binds would not be something that you would find in a prenatal yoga class. If an inversion or a back bend is already in the yogi's practice prior to getting pregnant, they can still do that while pregnant as long as they listen to their body and there's no other complications or um, restrictions from their doctor. Got it. So that's really like the main difference is the knowledge that the instructor has and the sequence of posing poses that you will have throughout the class. Got it. So I guess one question too is, and we mentioned this when we were chatting before we started recording together, that I guess what's good to know for moms considering doing a prenatal class is that, at least in your experience, in, in your class, a lot of the moms tend to be new to yoga in general. So that I think that's pretty pretty cool that you know they can go through that experience together. Anything you want to talk about just in terms of the benefits of why someone might want to start yoga during their pregnancy then? Prenatal yoga will improve your sleep. And if you've been pregnant, you know, sleep completely (laughs) eludes you. It also reduces your stress level and anxieties. So if this is a first pregnancy and your hormones are kicking your stress levels up, you're having anxiety over how is my body going to change? Mm. What what is birth going to be like? (laughs) Yoga will help 
squelch the fears, bring it down. Prenatal class will also increase your strengths, strength, flexibility, and endurance of the muscles you need for childbirth. Mm. That is important, um, especially if you have a natural vaginal birth. There is definitely endurance and strength needed. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. You will also decrease your low back pain, nausea, any hip or buttocks pain. Um, if you have pregnancy carpal tunnel syndrome, and it will reduce those symptoms, mm. headaches, and also alleviate shortness of breath. Um, some other added benefits to attending a prenatal class versus just doing like an online YouTube video or a DVD, you get the chance to connect with other mamas mm -hmm. and form a bond, and you also can share your birth stories and experiences. No, I love that. And you mentioned that the flow and the sequences might be different. Could you talk to us a little bit about that for those of us who are used to? I know there's definitely different flows for regular yoga classes as well, but what might we expect a prenatal <laughs> class to look like? So in my prenatal classes, I focus on stretching out the neck, the shoulders, the low back, and also really focus on hips, whether they're tight um, and opening the hips up. I also discuss the importance of pelvic tucking, mm -hmm. hip circles, and also the perineum stretch. So pelvic tucks, whenever you are in birth, you actually want to curl your pelvis forward and tuck it under. So your spine would look similar to a rainbow. And the reason that's important is because that shortens the birth canal, mm. which means the amount of pushing needed is shorter because you have a shorter distance to go. Um, hip circles, we do hip circles in Tadasana, which is mountain pose, mm -hmm. and we will take the hip circles both directions. If you are nearing the end of your 40 weeks. Hi friends, it's Catherine, and that sound today is for two things. One, the thing it's always for, which is to remind you of the halfway point or identify the halfway point of 15 minutes so you can turn around if you only have that amount of time and are joining us for an out and back walk. So turn around now if you have not already and only have 15 minutes. The second thing I wanted to tell you here is that Gabby has already mentioned a few exercises and is about to mention a lot more and more detail. Since she cannot see you completing these moves and give you feedback on your form. If you attempt to do them, you are doing them at your own risk. All right, back to Gabby. The hip circles encourages your baby to drop down into the birth canal, which also shortens the amount of pushing that you need to do. Mm -hmm. And hip circles are a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then the importance of stretching the perineum, you won't tear or you'll have less risk of tearing. Mm -hmm. um, I gave birth twice and I tore with my first one. And with my son, who was a lot bigger, I would not have torn. Saying he didn't have his fist glued to his upper lip. So <laughs> his elbow, yeah, like his elbow <laughs> caught yeah. my cervix and I ended up getting some stitches. Um, the midwife apologized profusely. She's like, you're doing great. You're doing great. You're doing great. And then she goes, and I stopped pushing. I'm like, what? Oh, <laughs> he has his fist under his, like on his lip. Like your his elbow is going to get you. Like there's no way around. There's nothing I can do. Like he's already in the birth canal. I just can't like jam his arm down where it needs right, to go right. under his skin. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the best pose, and I have had moms that took my class and then birthed their baby frog. I know that pose is miserable, but that is the best pose to stretch your perineum. Mm -hmm. And I'm almost 95% positive that that's the position she birthed in. Okay. Okay. Frog. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my, my mamas 
always give me the eye rolls and the moans and groans whenever we get into frog pose. But after having a mom tell me that was the absolute best thing that we've done in class. And if you could sneak it in more than once in a class, go for it. Like I'm mm -hmm. all about it, all about it. So could you like, I, I have seen frog pose before. Could you like give us a brief description for anyone who doesn't know what it's like? <laughs> okay. So if you are in quadruped, you are up on all fours, so your shoulders are directly stacked over your hands and your knees are directly under your hips. From here, you would take your knees slowly out to the sides and go down as far as you could. It's kind of like a mini split. Your knees are bent mm -hmm. and your feet are out a little bit wider than your knees. So whenever you get your hips down to where you're comfortable, you can come down on your forearms obviously leaving space for the belly. You can stay there. I encourage my students to wiggle around a little bit. Can you use your muscle tone to press it forward and back? Because that's gonna give you different stretches of the muscles in the hips. Um, and then you can also do what I call hip ticks. So you can kind of take your hips, take them left to right, see if you can pull the hip up to the right shoulder, left hip up to the left, the left shoulder, just to find a little bit of mobility in there. Mm -hmm. And you'd be amazed at all of the different pelvic floor muscles that stretch in there, but also where you're most sticky or uncomfortable. Got it. And if you want to go the extra mile, you find that really sticky spot <laughs> and then tuck your pelvis under. It's a little bit murder, <laughs> but your hips and your perineum will thank you. Let's see? <laughs> no, that's great. No, that's great. We'll have to get, do you have any, do you have that on your website that we could refer people to or just tell them to go look up frog pose, which is, it, it is a pretty basic pose for you. Yeah, it's a pretty remember. basic pose. Um, if, if you have anybody that will actually want to see it in a video, I can totally create the video and pop it up on my website. Oh, that's so sweet. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. And then I did have a mom-to-be friend who asked if, in general, any safe poses for stretching type hips that you might recommend, because obviously, as you mentioned, well, we, well, we actually talked about this before we started recording, but that tight hips can be a, a common request in classes for moms. <laughs> oh, it is. It's such a common request. So depending on your ability, Anjaniyasana, your low lunge, is a great hip opener. Fire log pose, um, and that is one where you're sitting down and you have your feet in front of you. So your legs are bent, but you're stacking the opposite ankle bone on the fleshy part of the opposite thigh. Mm -hmm. And then you should have your calf muscles stacked over top of each other, and you're going to feel it right in the back of that hip, kind of like the outer butt area mm -hmm. is what I call it. That's a really great hip opener. You can really see how open or not your hips are based on how high that top knee is. Mm. Um, butterfly is another easy opener. Make sure that when you are in butterfly, again, your knees are bent. You have the soles of your feet together. Heels are pulled in towards the sits bones. Taking your hands, your thumbs are on the soles of your feet. Roll your feet open like a book. Mm. That little action of rolling your feet open like a book creates more space in the hips, gives you a better hip opener. Um, goddess pose is a great standing hip opener. You can mm. take it up against the wall if you need the stability. Um, also in goddess, if you bring the hands to the fleshy part of the thighs, about two to three inches above the knees, set your weight down. So lock through your elbows. Use your hands to press your knees apart so you can feel your hips opening. And then just try to hang out there. If you're feeling unbalanced, scoot it up against the wall where like the small of your back, your, your buttocks can touch the wall to help support you. Um, another yoga pose that's very common is either of the warrior poses. So warrior one, you would focus more on the hip flexor in the hip of the leg that is extended back towards the back of your mat. 
warrior two, whenever you open up, you would take the leg that is bent, that hand of the same side would come to the bent knee, gently press that hip open. The opposite hand would find that hip and pull that hip open. So it's just little gentle counter pressure to mm -hmm. encourage a little more opening. Uh, the two favorite hip openers that my class likes to do is actually up against the wall. And it might be a little bit tricky getting there with the belly. Mm. So you would start with legs up against the wall. Try to get your butt as close to the wall as you can. And then you would bend the knees and walk your feet down the wall with your knees and your feet coming out at a 45. So basically you're in a recline malasana, deep squat pose mm. up against the wall. Inhale your arms up towards the ceiling. On the exhale, bring the forearms to the inside of the knee. It causes a little gentle pressure to encourage the hip opening. What I also really love about this pose is it aligns your spine and it feels so delicious. Mm. It's like such a relaxed, yummy pose. And yeah. also, oh, yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, I probably, like, just anytime you don't have to have your feet on the ground, right? It's a nice little, little break, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, the only, there was one woman that had missed class two weeks in a row and you'd be surprised at how much your belly grows in two weeks time. Mm -hmm. um, she got up against the wall this past class and she goes, oh, it's a little bit more work to breathe. <laughs> she has more pressure on her abdomen. Right, right. So, yeah. You can also take a bolster and place it um, just below your shoulder blades mm -hmm. and then coming out above the head if you have like a long rectangular bolster. Mm -hmm. um, you can still do malasana up against the wall. It's just reclining you so that you can get the air in if that's an issue. Got it. Got it. And then the last hip opener that we do up against the wall, we start with our legs up against the wall. Right leg, we would bend the knee, take it out to the side. Your right ankle comes to the opposite thigh. It's about two to three inches below the knee towards the sits bones. And taking your left foot, you would inchworm it down towards your sits bones. So it is a reclined pigeon up mm -hmm. against the wall. And that really gets into the hip. It can be brutal. So make sure <laughs> you inchworm it down. Sure, sure. And take your time. Because you will feel it very quickly. Got it. No, I, I love that. And thanks for sharing all those, all those awesome hip openers. I don't know. I know, I know we're getting near the end of our time. But I don't know if you could mention just briefly some of the poses that or some of the other areas that your students often, you know, look for poses for some, some quick ones just to give them some inspiration or some, some uh, relief for some of their, their uh, common uh, struggles. Struggles, yes. Child's pose is a great pose. It's a hip opener. Mm -hmm. It aligns the spine. If you have a partner with you, they can do a little sacrum squeeze. Mm -hmm. So your partner would stand over you in straddle pose with knees bent. Elbows are locked and you would take the um, palms of the hand on either side of the lower spine. You could find the sacrum back there. There's the bones that stick out just below that, kind of like in the meaty part mm -hmm. of your butt. Um, little counter pressure there. Talk with your partner, say too much, not enough. And I will usually hang out there with them for a little bit. I do this to all of my students in class mm -hmm. and then I'll need it a little bit. Just op just opposite hands taking the pressure on one side, taking it off on the other. Got it. Um, any forward straddle pose feels great. Mm -hmm. um, we also like to place like left hand down while we're in straddle pose, bringing that right arm up. So you're twisting the shoulders and the um, shoulder blades versus twisting from the stomach. Got it. Got it. Very cool. Well, I'm excited to to share the episode with my listeners, and I have a few few friends who are moms to be right now, so <laughs> I know they're gonna appreciate this. And where can we go, Gabby, to connect with you and learn more about what you're doing? And if we're close to your location, maybe take a class. You can find me on my website. It is gabrielleorcut.com. 
and I will spell that out for you because it is a little <laughs> bit long. So Gabrielle, G-A-B-R-I-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, Orcut, O-R-C-U-T-T dot com. And if you're on Instagram, you can find me at my sacred space yoga. Awesome. Well, thanks so, so much, Gabby. It's been, been fun chatting with you today. Yes, thank you. I hope that all of your mamas out there have little gold nuggets to take with them. And don't be afraid to practice these at home when you feel like you need it. Thanks for listening to The Fit 15. For show notes and more, visit fitarmadello.com slash podcast. See you next time.